to my show on multicultural communication. This is a series of lectures to help us to understand the diversity in our, in our country. My name is Dr. Martita Bird, or you may call me Dr. B, as my students do. And today I have uh, several goals uh, to help us to understand what's going on. The first thing is that uh, the, uh, the show is designed to help us to understand the, the changes and the uh, differences in our society, to understand them and to reduce fear about them, because it is fear that keeps us apart. My second goal is to help us to develop skills that allow us to interact with each other in a way that is developing the potential and facility of every person and that does not harm. And that's one of the things we need to work toward in our society is not harming people with our words. And so that's uh, one of the things we'll talk about here today, words. Uh, the, the topic of the show today is language and politics. Some people may say that's an odd pairing, language and politics, but actually language is extremely political. So let's talk about our, our, uh, the, the importance of language. Our first point will be uh, what language is, let's define it, and then to the importance of language and culture. Uh, the definition of language would be that language is a symbol system, uh, both verbal and written. Uh, that people use to communicate with each other. And symbols are important because they allow us to talk about things that are not here and not uh, now. Uh, symbolic communication is very important and we tend to think that human beings are the only animals on the planet who use symbolic communication. But we use language to connect with each other, to help people to understand what's going on in, in our inner selves. Uh, we use language to paint our picture of reality. People don't know what our reality is and so we talk to them, we use language, uh, we use different words, we use different expressions uh, in order that we may help them to understand what we're experiencing. Language is very, very important and language we need to keep in mind is very fragile. We're very dependent upon the way we talk, the things we say and how we say them to represent reality. Sometimes we make the mistake of, of um, understanding language as reality, but there are two different things. Language has many problems with it. If you look at my uh, PowerPoint later on or during this lecture, you can come to understand it better. But today we're going to be talking about difference in culture uh, in a society. Uh, we can talk, take the uh, example of, Fran of uh, Canada, and in Canada they speak two different languages. They speak English and they speak French. And Historically, they had a great uh, deal of difficulty uh, determining which one would be the most important language, which would be the official language. And they decided that uh, the politicians, anybody who runs for office in Canada, uh, no matter at what level, must be able to speak French and English. And you might say, why? Well, they want them to be able to speak the both languages because each language carries with it its own way of perceiving reality, its own way of talking about reality. So that's very important. Now let's talk about uh, the role of language in a society. Every society has its own language. Uh, group, every group of people have their own language. And in fact, we find that twins uh, have sometimes developed twin language. And it's a language that they develop among themselves as babies. Nobody else understands it. Nobody else understands what's going on, but they understand it. And often, uh, even though they acquire English and they learn English or they learn whatever their uh, mother tongue is, they remember that twin language in, even into adulthood. Uh, so all groups of people have a language. Now, uh, the next point is that there's no better language. No language is more important than another one, and again, there's always uh, uh, competition about that. No language is better than another, and all languages are appropriate uh, when used by the people who are in a particular context. So uh, there's no right or wrong about language, but what there, there are rights and wrongs about where you may use a particular language, who you're talking to, what time is it, what are you doing, uh, the context of it. 
So you may be wondering, where do the politics come in? You said language and politics. Well, the fact is that uh, language is very political. And the dominant language in a culture has to do with who has the guns and who has the money. The people who have the guns, the people who have the money, dictate the language that is used, the language that is recorded. Uh, for example, when you take an English course, we think that we are using language that the people use, but what's recorded in the textbook is the language of the privileged, and, and we don't get the language of the people. Same way with Spanish, if you've ever taken Spanish, you realize that in the Spanish class, you're learning Castilian Spanish, which is pure, but in uh, the reality of the communities, they're not speaking Castilian Spanish. It's not recorded. Why? Because they don't have power. Power and language go together. Uh, in fact, in our modern world and in all times, when a country conquers another uh, country, they make them change their language. That happened uh, in modern times, all over Africa, uh, every country, every uh, tribe that was conquered by uh, Europeans from whatever nation had to change their language. So that's why often among many African people, they speak the Queen's English uh, because they had to learn that uh, as the, for, because the conquerors were there. And then very often when the conquerors leave, the country reverts back. They'll say, okay, now we're going to use our own language as the official language. Uh, so it's a, it's a, um, what language you speak can even have to do with who oppresses you. And I will say that when you tell people what language they can speak, you are, have extremely great power uh, to oppress them. Now, I'm talking about laws and politics. Let's look at the United States. In the United States, we do not have an official language. And so let's talk about the different positions on language. One, you can have the official language, which is the one that is dictated by the government to be used in government uh, affairs, the official language. Then you can have the uh, only language that can be used. Uh, for example, and that's big brother kind of stuff. Uh, you can only speak this language uh, and otherwise you will be penalized. The problem with that is uh, when people are speaking, uh, they never speak exactly the same way. Nobody uses the language the same way. And so that leaves things open for someone to criticize, uh, to hurt, uh, because they're not speaking the only language. And of course it would be really scary, like the book 1984, uh, if we all had to speak the only language, one language, and we were... Uh, reporting on our neighbors that they weren't using the right language. Our children were reporting on their parents if they weren't using the right language. Uh, language is very powerful, and who has to speak what is an issue that is political. Now, we talk about English as uh, the only language. We can talk about uh, English as the official language, and there are actually 17 states in the, in the United States who recognize English as the official language of the state. New Mexico is one. California has come in and named it as the official language. Uh, and that all sounds good, but the issue is that um, the official language, California could not work just with English. I mean, San Jose could work with just English. Uh, when you go to the uh, get your driver's license, they give the license uh, a test in different languages because we have so many languages here. My son went to a high school here, uh, and when he was in high school, uh, we would get um, messages from the school in four languages, and they would be English, Spanish, Farsi, and Vietnamese. So we'd get a piece of paper with whatever the announcement was in four different languages because those, was the, those were the predominant languages spoken in the school. Um, so uh, uh, language then helps to connect people. So one of the functions of language, I gave you one, which is to uh, paint our picture of reality. But a second one is to identify us as members of the group. There are many what can be called Englishes. I found a great book called The Englishes of the World. Uh, Americans are not the only people who speak English. Uh, we speak English, but our English is different from British English. Our, their English is different from Australian English, so we speak different uh, Englishes, and you can 
kind of tell where someone comes from by the way they use English. Uh, we automatically can identify the British, uh, and of course now with all the royal uh, news going on, everybody's interested in, in hearing it. Uh, so uh, it's part of your identity as a culture, and it's also language is a part of your identity as an individual. Uh, the language that you speak, uh, you speak that because that's what your community spoke. Uh, it marks you as part of your community group. And when you're not speaking the language of the community group, you may not be accepted. Two years ago, um, uh, they were having an election for the principal chief and president of the Cherokee Nation. Uh, a man who was Cherokee, born in the nation, was running for president. However, and he was an engineer, he was highly well educated, but the, the tribal council decided that he was not eligible to run. Why? Because he didn't speak Cherokee. And because he didn't speak the language, they felt that he didn't understand uh, their way of perceiving the world, that he would not necessarily understand what their issues were, and so he was not able to run. So we do identify people as members of a particular group by the way they speak. Now, the interesting thing is that language uh, doesn't stay the same. It's a very active process. And so we have variations on a language. When people are speaking the same language, they will understand each other. When they're speaking different languages and they don't know each other's language, they won't understand each other. But each language has variations. Variations on a language are called dialects. And there are many dialects of English in the United States. And you may be saying, well, what are some of these dialects? Well, uh, we can talk specifically about geographical regions in the country. And we have dialects coming out of those regions. For example, we have the southeastern dialect, uh, which would be considered southern. We have the eastern seaboard dialect, which would be from states on the eastern seaboard. Uh, we have Ivy League dialect, people who sound like they've been to the Ivy League schools. That's why people liked John L. Kennedy so much. Uh, we have Northeastern, uh, uh, Northeast dialects. I remember as a young person, first time I heard people speaking from Rhode Island and other uh, states, I had difficulty understanding them. Although we were speaking the same language, we had different dialects. But after a few days, I was able to understand them. We have the Midwestern dialect, which is uh, considered the most common, and you hear a lot of newscasters speaking what we call the Midwestern dialect. You have Southwest uh, dialect, and we actually have California dialect, uh, West Coast. And uh, often people will say, wow, uh, you must come from California, and then there's Northwest. So geographically, we have different dialects, and the dialects uh, occur and form uh, because of different experiences. Uh, they form uh, because people have other languages that may influence them. For example, in Southeast Missouri, Gaelic and German were two languages that people brought to that area, and they greatly influenced how they sound today. Uh, African Americans, for example, speak black dialect. Some people call it Ebonics, but the truth is Ebonics is not a language. It's a dialect of English. And that dialect is influenced by tribal languages, that the African people in bondage brought to the United States. That uh, dialect is influenced by uh, Southern whites who taught them how to speak English. Uh, and so you have that very Southern uh, accent to it. Uh, and black dialect is part of our, for many of us, is part of our, our identity. Now, some people hear it and say, oh, uh, they, those people are not educated. However, what you hear me speaking right now is a formal black dialect. It is in phonology and it is in word choice. Uh, so we have dialects that move from ethnicity to ethnicity. Uh, when I came here to teach, I heard uh, English, I heard Span uh, Spanglish, I, he I heard uh, Jamaican. Uh, so many dialects of English shaped by a mother tongue and English. Now, some people say when you speak a, a, a dialect that you don't understand the grammar rules. How uneducated. Every linguistic behavior uh, is following grammar. 
It's just that you may not understand the grammar, but there are grammar rules. The people are following them. Otherwise, they wouldn't understand each other. Uh, so we need to understand that every language has a grammar and every language is appropriate for the context that is used and the people who are speaking it. So when I'm with uh, when when I'm in my hometown with the people that I graduated from high school with, I might speak black dialect. When I'm with my girlfriends, I might speak black dialect. When I'm at home, but in my classroom, I don't. When I'm preaching, when I'm in the pulpit, I don't because those places are not appropriate. Uh, but dialect has nothing to do with the intellect of people, uh, and we need to keep that in mind. In our public schools, the latest data tells us that students who are of color and who may speak different dialects are light, uh, are more likely not to be identified when they are gifted. And they're not recognized because we have a primarily Euro-Western teaching force, uh, 80%, where the public school system is 30% or more children of color. Uh, and so uh, we mistake dialect for intellect. And it's, uh, they're not the same. Uh, in fact, for my son who is disabled, uh, he doesn't speak quite like other people. And they assume that he's stupid. Uh, they assume he has nothing to say. But the fact is, if you sit down and listen to him, you can uh, figure out that he's pretty intelligent. So we have dialects of English. Uh, now, here's the thing. Uh, we often hear people and we say, oh, I just can't understand them. And we attack publicly people who may not be speaking English. Uh, and that is a travesty. Uh, just last year, uh, there was a news story about a young lady who came to a public park. She had on a shirt to see a Puerto Rico. Uh, a person in the park walked up to her, told her she didn't belong there, and then said, are you even a citizen of the United States? Well, again, he didn't know his, his history because actually uh, Puerto Rico is a protectorate of the United States, and uh, she had every right to be there. So we need to be careful about trying to tell other people what language they should use or they shouldn't use because that's a political act and it is an act of oppression. And we don't want to do that. We need to recognize that people from different places use different languages and that they are appropriate in their conversations. So we're talking about language and politics. It's very important to remember that America has always been and will be a multilingual nation. We are multilingual from all the way back to the colonial periods when people came. We had colonies, Russian colonies, Polish colonies. Uh, we had Irish colonies. Uh, we had all sorts, of course, British, uh, French. We are always a multilingual nation and we continue to be a, a multilingual nation. Uh, uh, and, and that's an important thing for us. The National English uh, Teachers Association pointed out that uh, we should not have an appointed language because English and any language is vibrant, it's living, and it continues to grow and be vibrant by the infusion of uh, other languages, uh, other ways of thinking, uh, other words. Um, and that's a very important thing. Even the English teachers feel that we should uh, that we should carry. Uh, so we we uh, in our in our multilingual nation, uh, we need to understand that we don't have the right to tell other people how to speak. And I know I remember when I came here from the Midwest, I was in a store one day and it was in a, a Mexican herbal shop, and everybody was speaking Spanish, speaking Spanish, and I actually found myself thinking. God, I'm tired of hearing Spanish. I wish they would speak English. Here, a person who talks about multicultural communication, and I had to catch myself and say, I'm in a, a Mexican shop. What am I saying? What am I thinking? Uh, and not to be irritated. On the other hand, I remember going to France. I was in Paris at the Louvre. That's my taxi driver. Taxi driver told me it's the Louvre. And um, I remember walking through the halls and trying to find, understand what pictures, and everything was in French. And I actually was standing there thinking, damn, I wish these plat platelets were in English. And then I caught myself and thought, oh, I'm in France. I can't expect the French to put them in my language. I should learn some French if I'm going to come here. So instead of expecting everybody to speak like you, you need to understand that people have a right to speak the way they want to. I want to point out that America is 
almost the only technologically advanced nation that does not require its students to learn more than one language. Many cultures feel that English is a, a common language worldwide. And so you can go to many countries and people speak uh, their own language and they speak English. Many people in France speak English. They know We know they speak French, but they also speak English. Uh, many people from African countries speak their tongue and they speak English. Um, and can be pretty persnickety about it. I went to a conference in Paris and I met these people who were from African nations that had been colonized. And they talk, spoke to me in English for a while. And then they switched their own language. And they were pretty upset that I didn't speak French. And they walked away from me. So I thought, yes, I should have learned some words. Uh, as we close out, we want to remember that uh, language is an important part of culture. It is an important part of who you are. And that uh, it's something that we need to uh, learn to accept that people speak other languages. It doesn't mean that they're stupid. It doesn't mean that they're not loyal to the United States. They're simply speaking the language of choice for their context and uh, for their own identity. I'm glad you're with me today, and I hope you'll come back me for, come back for my next uh, lecture. And um, remember this as you go through your day. Um, enjoy the differences in language uh, in your community. And maybe perhaps learn a different language. They say that there's a program that millennials are using to learn a, a new language in uh, 30 days. So find out what that is. Uh, you're with Dr. Bird uh, on multicultural series. Uh, I would ask you to look at the PowerPoint at the end of this uh, uh, lecture, which is, the link is at the bottom. And I'll leave you with this saying, from Mr. Spock, live long and prosper.